syllable script in Python. In this video, we'll examine the behavior and implementation of a script called syllables.py. The implementation of this script includes several of the basic Python programming concepts we've covered so far. What syllables.py does is give a linguistic phonological representation to a word in the English language. Sometimes in, ling in the linguistic subfield of phonology, it's appropriate to represent a word by its sequence of syllables. And those syllables are represented by consonants, represented by C, and vowels, represented by V. And there are several appropriate C and V combinations to comprise an English syllable, such as consonant vowel, consonant vowel, consonant vowel, ka, na, da, or consonant vowel consonant, fo, ton, or sometimes there is a consonant cluster at the beginning of a syllable, here represented by cl in the orthography, clicking, clicking. You'll notice also that just because two consonants appear at one point, it doesn't mean that we are pronouncing two consonantal sounds. The pronunciation of PH in photon is one consonant. Likewise, the NG in clicking is one consonant. And so we want to capture that in our script. Okay, let's look at the script. You can see here we've documented <clears throat> that syllables.py is a short script for marking consonant vowel patterns within words. It does so using a couple of methods, a couple of functions, get cv sequence, which takes a word as its argument, and we have that information here in the doc string word to transform into a CV sequence, sequence of consonants and vowels. One other function used is the get syllable sequence, which breaks a CV sequence into syllables. This also takes a word as its argument the word whose syllable sequence will be found. And down here at the bottom, we have the main entrance to the code. If name equals main, there are two underscores on either side of name and on either side of main, this statement here says, if we are going to run syllables.py as a standalone script, which we are doing, this is the place to start. So we start by iterating over these words. What words? The words right here in the for loop. For word in Canada, photon, clicking, and so on. This for loop will iterate five times, the first time with the value of word being evaluated to Canada, and so on until the last time where caramel is the last evaluation of this variable word. So we print the word 
followed by a colon and a space, followed by the output of get syllable sequence word, with word passed as an argument, that is, to get syllable sequence. So the next place to look in the flow of our code is in the function get syllable sequence. Here again is the get syllable sequence method. The doc string here is just like a comment in that it's human readable, but the machine does not read it at all. The interpreter does not read this at all. The first line the interpreter will read is this. We're going to assign to a variable called sillseek for syllable sequence. We're assigning, <coughs> excuse me, we're assigning the value returned by get cv sequence with word passed to it. So we are taking the argument passed to get syllable sequence, and now we are passing that to get cv sequence. So before we go any further, before we look at this code right here, we need to go look at the code inside get cv sequence to see what's being assigned to sillseek. So once again, get cv sequence will take as its argument a word this is the word to transform, and it returns cvseq, which is a string, just like word, but this string is the sequence of consonants and vowels in that word. In order to do the work in get cv sequence, we initialize some variables. First, we define what the vowels are in a Python list, as you can see by the square brackets and the values separated by commas. This particular list happens to be a list with all string values. A, E, I, O, and U. These are our vowels. We also want to define clusters, which in this case we're saying clusters is a list of consonant combinations like the pH and photon, like the ng in clicking, or the ck in clicking, which represent a single consonant sound pronounced. We do not pronounce the P and the H separately. We pronounce them as F. We don't pronounce the N and G separately. We pronounce them as M. Mm. We don't pronounce the C and K separately. We pronounce them as K. We'll also have two variables, prev cons, which stands for previous consonant, and cvseq the consonant vowel sequence, and remember this is the value we'll be returning. Prevcons will be set to none, and cvseq will be set to the empty string. None might take a little explaining none, or in some other languages, null, is a value that can stand in for a variable when there is nothing assigned to that variable. And so you'll see in some of our if statements down here, if prev cons, if previous consonant, and we're not evaluating, we're not seeing if prevcons is equivalent to anything or seeing if there's anything in prevcons 
we're just simply saying if it exists. So if prefcons is equal to none, then the logic here is that prefcons does not exist. There is nothing assigned to prefcons. So this condition is checking whether or not something besides none is assigned to prefcons to the previous consonant. Okay. So let's go back to the for loop. We're going to iterate over the letters in the word. Notice we can use the same for loop syntax here for car in word, that is for each character in the word. We're using this syntax to iterate over a string and to iterate over the characters in that string. But notice the syntax is similar to what we had down below in main for word in this list. So whether you are iterating over the items in a list or you're iterating over the characters in a string that is C followed by A followed by N and so on, the for syntax will look very similar. Okay, let's return to where we were in the code. Back in git cv sequence. So we're going to iterate over the characters in the word. So let's say our first word is Canada. So our first value assigned to car will be C. So if prefcons, now we haven't set anything to previous consonant, so this is going to fail immediately and we're not even going to check what's on the other side of and. Instead we're going to move right down to the next elif. If car, if the letter C is in vowels, so this is just a simple check to see if the letter C is found in this list of vowels in A, E, I, O, U. Of course, C is not in vowels, so we'll continue. Elif, previous consonant, and again, we've already failed. The rest of the condition doesn't matter. Let's move on. Elif, previous consonant. Again, a failure. So we finally have come down to else. Else now we're going to give previous consonant a value, finally. Previous consonant will be set to car, which is C. So now previous consonant is equal to C. We've reached the end of the for loop, so we'll now go back to the top and iterate over the next character in the word which in the case of Canada would be A. So, if previous consonant, and now there is a value stored at previous consonant, that is the value C. So, this passes, and car in vowels, and the car this time is the letter A which is in fact in the list of vowels. So this passes and we'll execute the code inside this if block. So we're now going to add to this variable cvseek the letters c and v and we're going to reset previous consonant to none. <laughs> 